In this lecture, we'll begin discussing the growth of a droplet by the collision coalescence mechanism. And what we have is inside a cloud, we actually have droplets of differing sizes. Uh, we talked last time about how the growth by condensation tends to create monomodal uh, distributions. Uh, and there are processes that go on inside the cloud that tend to drive the size distribution to have different size uh, droplets. One of those is random turbulence. Uh, random turbulence, you can have two similar sized droplets run into one another, collide, uh, coalesce into a larger droplet. Or um, you can also have slight differences in the fall velocity of those droplets. And if you have uh, differences in the fall velocity, then the larger droplets will actually fall faster and will overtake the smaller droplets that have a smaller terminal velocity. And the result is, is that a larger droplet will sweep out a volume uh, as it falls through the cloud. And what we want to do is we want to create a mathematical model to describe the growth of this collector droplet uh, passing through a, a group of uh, cloud droplets inside the cloud. And the things that we need to know to be able to construct that model are we need to know the terminal velocity of the droplets as a function of radius. Uh, we need to know the liquid water content of the cloud. We need to know the collision efficiency. So what is the likelihood that a, a droplet falling, sweeping up this volume will actually physically collide with all of the droplets that are inside that volume. And then we need to know the coalescence efficiency. Are there circumstances when you have two droplets that actually collide and bounce off instead of coalescing? You might have seen this effect uh, with uh, soap bubbles. You can blow soap bubbles and if you hit them at the right angle they'll just bounce off of one another without actually uh, coalescing. So the first step in this process is actually to determine the terminal velocity of droplets. And the terminal velocity is defined as the speed of an object that's falling when there's no net force uh, on, that, uh, on that object. And the two forces acting on our cloud droplets are the downward force due to gravity, which is pulling it down, and then there's a resistance force, a drag force uh, that is uh, caused by that air, by, the, by that droplet trying to move through the air. And, uh, by definition, a terminal velocity is achieved when the net force uh, of adding together the upward directed force positive, the downward directed force negative is going to be equal to zero. So the downward directed force of gravity is very uh, simple. We just have a force is equal to mass times acceleration where g is the gravity, gravity constant. And we know the mass of our droplet because these are spherical cloud droplets. So the mass is 4 thirds pi r cubed which is the volume times the density of liquid water times gravity. And for the drag force, uh, for uh, diameters between about 2 and 40 micrometers, uh, the appropriate drag force is actually Stokes' drag force. And Stokes' drag force is given by 3 pi eta times d, the diameter times v, which is the velocity. And eta, in this case, is the dynamic viscosity of the air. Uh, the more viscous the air is, the um, stronger the drag force. And the viscosity of air um, at sea level under most STP conditions is 1.7 times 10 to the minus fifth, and the units are kilograms per meter per second. So we know what the downward directed force is, we know what the upward directed force is, we stick that back into our net force equation. Uh, we have minus 4 thirds pi r cubed rho L g, uh, plus our Stokes drag force, and here I've replaced uh, the diameter is twice the radius, and, and now I've replaced a V, which is the velocity, uh, as the terminal velocity, because when you set this up to be equal to zero, by definition, the velocity is the terminal fall speed of that object. And then you can do the algebra, and you get that the terminal fall speed is equal to two ninths times gravity times the density of liquid water times r squared over eta. And this is uh, strictly valid for radii between 1 and 20 micrometers. Uh, alternatively, you could do the same equation in terms of diameter, uh, and this one would be valid for diameters between 2 and 40 micrometers. And if we just plug in some numbers, if we plug in a radius of 1 micrometer, 
then we'll get a terminal velocity of about 0.1 meters per hour. So a one micrometer droplet uh, in one hour uh, by the gravitational, the terminal velocity would cause that to fall basically you know, one tenth of a meter. Well, that's very small. That's why these droplets essentially stay, stay suspended in the atmosphere. If you move up to a 10 micrometer radius droplet, um, it will fall about 11.5 meters in one hour. So once again, 10 micrometer droplets are going to remain suspended in the atmosphere and they're not going to fall out of the cloud at any significant velocity. And then we can take this and go beyond the strict limits of Stokes drag, which is strictly valid between 2 and 40 micrometers for diameter. If we do a radius of 50 micrometers, which is a diameter of 100 micrometers, then Stokes drag force is no longer the appropriate um, uh, drag force. But I just wanted to see what kind of uh, number we would get if we plugged in uh, the fall speed of a drizzle droplet. And by doing that and using Stokes drag, recognizing that that's going to be an inaccurate representation for this particular droplet, um, you'll end up with a fall speed of 288 meters per hour. Um, and you can envision that if you had a uh, stratus cloud deck out over the ocean, at an altitude of 800 meters, that a drizzle droplet that were fall, was falling out of that cloud you know, wouldn't have to endure uh, more than two hours to make it from the cloud base down to the surface. And so that's kind of just barely what we would consider to be the beginning of precipitation falling out of the cloud. The next step in this process uh, is going to be trying to calculate the terminal velocity for droplets that are outside of these strict boundaries where we can use Stokes drag and we'll end up with a, an expression or a series of expressions uh, that will describe the fall speed of droplets uh, starting from all the way from uh, some very small cloud droplets all the way up to the largest rain droplets. And then we can start talking about the liquid water content of the cloud the collision efficiency and the coalescence efficiency.